Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell, and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly periodical that is put out by the Church of Christ here in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. If you'd like to learn more about that paper, visit our website, www.mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and on the left-hand side of the homepage, you will see several tabs that are associated with Fulton County Gospel News. If you would like to receive the paper through the United States Postal Service or through your email, let us know. All of our contact information is on our website. We also have a Facebook page, Church of Christ at Mammoth Spring, but we also have the Fulton County Gospel News web uh, Facebook page as well. So if you're interested in the paper, let us know. Get a hold of us somehow, and we will surely get it to you. It is a free subscription, and, uh, well, hopefully you would enjoy it. But anyway, we are going to talk today about our mortal bodies. So I want to read to you the definition of mortal from the dictionary, Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster says of this word, causing or having caused death, fatal, a mortal injury, subject to death, mortal man. Every living creature is mortal. So we know the word, uh, the meaning of the word mortal in a in a daily usage, in our, in our common language of the day, we understand what it means to be a mortal human being. And I, I suppose everything we've gone through over the last year and a half with the pandemic, perhaps our own mortality has been a thought because of the, just the tremendous loss that, that we've all experienced. And I would say certainly some to a greater extent than others, but man, I, I don't know of anybody that hasn't been affected either directly or indirectly by COVID. And I do think in times like these, our own mortality is something that's on our minds. I know, I know it is for me. And I certainly would guess, and probably accurately so, that it is for you too. But let's talk about our mortal bodies from the Bible. This phrase, or this word rather, is found six times in the Bible. The first time, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at each verse and see what it's talking about and then have some considerations about that. First time it's used is Romans chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul there writing says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Well, what Paul's talking about here in Romans chapter 6 is the fact that the person who has been baptized into Christ has died to sin, Galatians 6, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 6 and verse 2, and that they should no longer live in it. Baptism puts us into the it puts us into contact with the death with the blood of Christ and we are then raised to walk in newness of life. And so our old man Romans 6 and verse 6 has been crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin for he that is dead is freed from sin. Well again we die to sin we are buried in baptism, and we are raised to walk in newness of life. So from that time on, we're raised to walk in newness of life. From that time on, we have to do what Romans 6 and verse 12 says. We do not permit sin to reign in our mortal bodies. And in fact, he goes on in verse 13, Neither yield your members as instruments of, of unrighteousness unto sin. Well, he's talking about the members of our physical, our mortal bodies. We don't use our bodies to sin. Rather, we, in fact, it's kind of interesting, you move over to Romans chapter 12, in the first two verses, we offer our bodies up as a living sacrifice to God. They are now in service to Him, and so we don't let sin reign in our mortal bodies. Rather, here's the rest of Romans 6 verse 13, yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members, okay, there's your, that's a reference to your body again, as instruments of righteousness unto God. So that's Romans chapter 6 and verse 12. But again, that term mortal is used. And in the Greek language, it's this is interesting too because, well, it's the, the same idea. The Greek word is thnatos, and it means subject to death. So what Paul's saying there is, let not sin therefore reign in your body that is subject to death. We're all going to die, of course, unless the Lord comes back before we do. But in that time... Uh, rather, in the meantime, we're not going to allow sin to control our body that is subject to death. The next time we see it is over in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. 
Paul says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwell in you. Now that's a promise of resurrection from the dead. And of course, we think of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and in fact, we're going to go there in just a little bit, but just like Jesus was raised up from the dead by the Spirit, well, our bodies, the King James says quickened, well, our mortal bodies will be made alive by His Spirit that dwells in you. And so, therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, uh, rather, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. And so the message of Romans 8 is the exact same message, message of Romans chapter 12. And Romans chapter 6, we have a mortal body, it's subject to death, it's subject to, de de to decay, and we have a choice. We can either offer our bodies up as a living sacrifice unto God, Romans 12, 1 and 2, or we can yield our instruments, yield our members as instruments of unrighteousness, Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. But see, if we choose to live for God, and God's Spirit dwells in us, and his body is going to make al rather his spirit is going to make alive our mortal bodies then we better be sure that we're living accordingly uh, living as we ought to live because we live in the hope of the resurrection as you read further down into Romans chapter 8 of course Paul does talk in greater detail about the resurrection and the glory that will be revealed that starts in Romans 8 verse 18 down through verse oh down through about verse 25 talking about the hope that we live in. Well, our mortal bodies, our subject-to-death bodies, anticipate a time when they will be immortal. And so that actually leads us to our next passage, where the, the, where the word mortal is used. I'm turning over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to look at verses 53 and 54. Of course, this is the chapter where Paul discusses in great detail not only the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, but also the great amount of witnesses. There were a minimum of 513 eyewitnesses to the resurrected Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, that begins in verse 5, and it goes down through about verse 10. Well, then he discusses the fact that some in Corinth were saying that, that there would be no future resurrection. They weren't denying Christ's resurrection. They were denying a future resurrection. And incidentally, there are some in the churches of Christ who still do that today. But here's, what, here's the case Paul makes. If it is the case that there is no resurrection in the future, then it is also necessarily the case that Christ is still dead and you are still in your sins. Paul makes an, an argument that is so powerful in that chapter. Our future resurrection is based on the fact that Jesus himself was raised from the dead. So in discussing all of that, you get down to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 5, I'm going to start in verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this, here's our word, mortal, this, this which is subject to death, shall put on immortality. It will no longer be subject to death. Once the resurrection takes place, and you know, this is, this is what Jesus speaks of in John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, the resurrection from the dead. Jesus told his listeners in that, on that occasion that uh, there's an hour coming where all who are in the graves shall hear his voice and come forth. Well, that's what Paul's talking about here in Romans, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This mortal must put on immortality. And so verse 54, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. You know, Jesus has already defeated the grave. We know that. He was raised from the dead as he prophesied would happen. He has defeated death. But you know what? You and I still die. Our bodies still, well, the word Paul uses here in 1 Corinthians 15, our bodies are still corruptible. But there is a future event that's going to take place in a moment. And that word moment in the Greek language, it's a very interesting term because it literally means time that is indivisible. It's such a small amount of time, you can't cut it in half. When Christ comes back, 
whenever that may be, the events that Paul is describing here are going to happen so quickly that you can't cut the time in half. You, it's in the blink of an eye at the last trump. Some, it's, it's an amazing passage and so hopeful. Again, you know, living in the current historical context that we're living in, there have been a lot of people who have lost hope. People, people being isolated and quarantined, suicide numbers have gone up throughout the last year and a half around the world. A lot of folks have lost hope. But the Christian lives in the hope of this mortal putting on immortality and this body that we have that is corruptible becoming incorruptible. You know, John tells us also, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, that, well, he says, Beloved, behold, what manner of love this is that we should be called the children of God. You know, it's a blessing to be a Christian. But then he talks about the hope of the resurrection and seeing Jesus as he is. And he says, we're going to be like that. We don't know what it's going to be like, but we know it will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Man, that's a message of hope that people need. Think about the resurrection that's going to happen in a moment, time indivisible, and in the twinkling of an eye. So that's Romans 6, 11, or I'm sorry, Romans 6, 12, Romans 8, 11, 1 Corinthians 15, 53 and 54. Now there are two more verses in the New Testament that use this term mortal. I'm turning over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and the word appears again in there, in that chapter, in verse 11. But what Paul's talking about here is himself and his fellow servants as ministers of the New Testament, as people who have the treasure, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, in earthen vessels. He's talking about the treasure of the gospel, and the earthen vessels is their body. They go about preaching the gospel everywhere they go. And then beginning in verse 8, he talks about the trouble that they, that they endured, that they were perplexed, persecuted, cast down, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Well, verse 10 tells us what he's talking about there. His physical body was beaten and scarred from all the persecution that he endured over time. So let's start reading there, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body, our body that is subject to death. And man, if anybody understood that your body is subject to death, it would be Paul. So, for instance, you read, you go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and begin reading in about verse, let's see, beginning reading in about verse 23 of 2 Corinthians 11 down through the end of that chapter, and he talks about the beatings, the stripes, the shipwrecks, the wanderings, the perils, all the difficulties that he went through. He literally was bearing about in his body the life of Jesus Christ. But he did that in his mortal body. Now, it's interesting because the, the final time that we read the word mortal in the Bible is in the same context of that discussion in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And so, we're always, always bearing about in our body the marks of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, our, our flesh, the body that is subject to death. Well, then you get down to... Well, let's see here. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, very familiar passage. He says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So he draws that contrast, again, between the mortal body, the outer man, as opposed to the inner man. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, well, what could Paul see? Well, he could see the marks in his body. He could see the evidence of the persecution that he had endured. He says, We don't look at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And it does, here's the thing. Sometimes the, the chapter and verse breakups can, can hinder our understanding. So let's not allow that to happen. Uh, the end, so the end of 2 Corinthians 4.18, For the things which are seen are temporary, the things which are not seen are eternal, for we know. 
that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. Now we know what he's talking about there. He's just given a discourse on the mortal body that had suffered persecution and desertion and, and being perplexed and cast down. He said, we don't look at all that stuff. We look at the stuff we can't see. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan. Well, he's, again, he's talking about his mortal body. Earnestly desiring to be, de to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up by life. And that's what we're talking about. Being subject to death one day is going to be swallowed up by life. Well, folks, that's the resurrection from the dead. So we keep reading here. Uh, let's see. We're in Second Corinthians 5. Now we're verse 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, well, that's his mortal body, while we're here on this earth, while we're living, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, the mortal body, the body that suffers persecution and that will one day die. We, we desire to be absent from that and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we labor that whether present, okay, alive, or, ra or rather uh, dead and, and with Christ, or absent, while we're still here on this earth, we're not in the presence of the Lord, we're still here, we're, we're perplexed, we're cast down, we're persecuted, but we're not looking at all that stuff. So whether therefore we are present or absent, we may be accepted by him. Well, so Paul, why does all that matter? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. What body has Paul been talking about? Well, you jump back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11, and he talks about the mortal flesh. And so, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, his mortal flesh, according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. Folks, we are all mortal. Our bodies are mortal. They are subject to death. We will one day be a fatality, of course, if the Lord does not come back first. We understand that. You know, First Thessalonians 4 talks about that, about those who are alive and remain when the Lord does come back. We don't know when that's going to be, but when He does return, and here's the wonderful hope that we live in, here's the the promise that is given because Jesus himself defeated death. When he comes back, we're going to be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And again, that's 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And I tell you another passage that should instill some hope within us. I'm turning over to Philippians chapter 3. Uh, listen to the last two verses. Philippians 3.20, beginning, For our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. Okay, vile. Again, it's, it's lowly. I think, the, I think the New King James says our lowly body. The body that we have now that's subject to death and decay and disease and, and, and viruses. He's going to change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to su subdue all things to himself. That's what John was saying in 1 John 3. That's what Paul hoped for in 2 Corinthians chapters 4 and 5. That's what Paul spoke of in 1 Corinthians 15 when he was talking about the resurrection from the dead. And that's what Paul told the Romans. Listen, you have a choice here. You can either use your mortal body for service to God, or you can yield it to service of unrighteousness. But that choice is in your hands. We live in mortal flesh. We are subject to death. And of course, you remember when Adam and Eve when Adam and Eve violated God's command and they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
they began to die. Death was brought into the world. They were separated from God, but they were restored by that animal sacrifice. You'll recall there in Genesis chapter 3 that God covered them in animal skins. Well, you know, there's, there's, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, Hebrews 9.22. And I think that was the initial animal blood sacrifice for sin. That's the only way I can see that there in Genesis chapter 3. But then as you continue reading the end of Genesis chapter 3, the Godhead separated them from the tree of life, and the reason was, lest they partake of it and live forever. Death was introduced because of sin. And we still are subject to death today. And that's not going to come to an end until Christ comes back. When he comes back at the end, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 24, and it's at the end when the trump will sound in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that's going to happen. I don't know all the specifics and all the details. In fact, uh, the inspired apostle John didn't even know. And, that, and that's what he says there in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. We don't know what it's going to be like, but we do know that it'll be like his, for we will see him as he, as he is. And every man that has this hope within him purifies himself even as he is pure. That's 1 John 3 and verse 3. And folks, that's the hope that we live in. And so we are to live pure and godly lives while we are in this mortal body and absent from the Lord. Because we want to be present with the Lord one day. We want to be clothed with that house that's made without hands, eternal in the heavens. I hope this podcast has been encouraging to you. We've been through some difficult times, I tell you. It's, it's just been terrible. We've lost folks. Folks are suffering. Families have been hurt. Churches have been devastated. So many bad things have happened. We live in a mortal existence. We live in an existence of suffering. But we also live with hope. Hope of the resurrection. Hope of eternal life with God. But we have to live accordingly and in alignment with His Word. Thanks again for listening to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast today. Again, we're on... Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, like and share this content. Subscribe to it if you would, please. And let's get God's Word out to as many people as possible in as many ways as possible. Again, if you're interested in the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com. All of our contact information is on there. The the, uh, periodical is free of charge. Let us know. We can send it to you as an individual, but if it's a congregation, we can send a free bundle of the papers to your congregation if you'd like that. Just let us know. Thanks again for listening today, and I will catch you on the next episode.